When the Easter season began, Pastor Mark noted that we collectively had an alleluia problem. And what he meant by that was simply, we have not yet determined collectively how we will conclude the Easter acclamation. Christ is risen. He is risen Well, see, that's the conundrum. To alleluia or not to alleluia at the end, that was what Pastor Mark postulated the alleluia problem. Well, I don't know uh, if you've noticed since the outset of this sermon, the preacher's got a weak voice today. I suppose at some point I might just need to say, that's it, I'm done, we're finished early, end of sermon. That might be an alleluia solution. <laughs> Preacher wraps it up quick, you might hear. Alleluia. Right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'd say it because you can't wait to get to your Mother's Day brunch. It is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all moms here. Join us for Mom Moses uh, in the courtyard following worship. Uh, there's a picture station there too for families. But it's also Ascension Day today. Now you might not have known today was Ascension Sunday. Ascension itself fell last Thursday. The last Sunday of Easter is also Ascension Sunday. And it's my hypothesis among us that Ascension is truly the Alleluia solution to any and every Alleluia problem one might have. While you might have missed the date, that is, you didn't know it was Ascension Sunday, one cannot overestimate or overstate the importance of the Ascension of Jesus. When Jesus goes back to heaven from where he came, when Jesus returns to the Father who sent him, the prayer that he prayed that we heard this morning is, is fulfilled. Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I'm coming to you, Holy Father. I am not a part of this world. You know, John, who recorded those words, began his gospel with these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him, that is the word, all things have been made. Without him, that is the word, nothing was made that was made. And the word became flesh, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace and truth, sent from the Father. At Jesus' incarnation, God entered this world that he might go where he did not deserve. So that through him, life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we may one day go where we do not deserve. The ascension is the ratification, the certification that the work of Christ has been accepted. His sacrifice fulfilled all the requirements that God had laid out. His perfect life, his innocent suffering and death on our behalf has been accepted by God. And now as Jesus has returned and stands before the Father, so too we through Jesus stand before the Father, righteous and holy and acceptable in Christ, here and now. One day, then, and there. His ascension is the alleluia solution to, to all of our alleluia problems in this world. Let me echo what Pastor Kyle said last week. Do you feel like nobody remotely likes you? Everyone wants to keep their distance from you? God loves you. Alleluia. You feel like your life's in shambles? You got a lot of holes? Nothing really fits together? In Jesus Christ, you are declared complete. Alleluia. No one wants to pick you. No one wants to be on your side, stick around you. In Jesus, you are God's chosen. Alleluia. Shame and guilt weighing you down? 
you are fully forgiven by the Father. Alleluia. Ascension is the Alleluia solution. Now, I'm not suggesting that you are going to become a Hallelujah hollering congregation. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that I would mind it. That's perfectly fine. I'm not saying, however, that's going to happen. But even if you don't hear it, you're going to see it. Because hallelujah is nothing more than the faith lived out. That's the New Testament's testimony. As a matter of fact, you know, in Jesus' ministry, as he healed, restored sight, or restored hearing, restored voice, no one ever came up and said, hallelujah. Not once. In Paul and Peter's ministry, well, whether it was when imprisonments ended and through the power of the Spirit, they were set free from jail, or when mass conversion happened and through the power of the Spirit, hundreds or thousands were added to the faith. Never once did Paul or Peter pen or proclaim an alleluia. Neither Jude nor James jotted a single one down. From the beginning, clear till the ending. It's not until the 19th chapter of the 22 chapter Revelation that in the New Testament we find the word, hallelujah. As the saints are gathered around the throne. That's the first time we hear it raised. Now whether it's hale or ale, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's two Hebrew words smushed together that translate well, praise the Lord. It's kind of wondering, why do you think it is that we only find it in the New Testament when, when gathered around the throne at last, they offer up the word? Could it be because then and there, they possess all the promises of faith by sight? I think so. But you know what that means? That means here and now, by faith, you possess everything they have by sight making the ascension an alleluia solution. The ascension is the alleluia solution to every alleluia problem. As Jesus returns to his Father who sent him, as Christ goes back to heaven, he affirms that the mission that God gave him has been accomplished. You heard John read the words earlier. I have completed what you have given me to do. Alleluia. In returning to heaven, in going back to his Father who sent him, our Lord assures us that the ministry of the church will continue now the work of God in this world until he returns. You heard John read the words earlier. I'm coming to you, but Father, as you sent me, so I am sending them. Alleluia. In returning to heaven, in going back to the Father who sent him, our Lord pledges to intercede for us. You heard John read the words earlier. Protect them, Father, from the evil one and sanctify them by your word. Alleluia. In returning to heaven, in going back to the Father who sent him, our Lord promises us that one day too, we will rise, ascend, and go to him in heaven. Father, they are no more of the world than I am of the world. They are yours. Alleluia. That's why around the throne the saints raise the word, praise the Lord. His ascension is the validation that all of his promises are kept. Our redemption is secure. His reign in mercy is ongoing. His victory is eternal. Alleluia. Alleluia captures the content of the faith. Whether around the throne and around the altar, before the Lord and before his word, or around the kitchen table or the hospice bed, before the day begins or before it ends. Alleluia. That is the phrase that can capture the praise that is due our God. 
Alleluia. Alleluia is simply the faith lived out, even if the word isn't heard. Perhaps we'll hear him now and then, but it's not the goal of this sermon. I've told the truth, I didn't come to fool ya. Christ's ascension is our certainty of his love and call for you and me, making each day a lived out alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.